candidly to, do, to donate to not only the land and the, the building, and he so graciously agreed to do that. And as you probably, at least some of you have, and we would invite after uh, invite all of you today to uh, come forward and to look at uh, the plans and the uh, mock-up of the building that we have uh, planned for this site right now. This is a this is a great. Uh, day for Salt Lake Community College, and it couldn't be more appropriate. Many of you who know me know that normally my uniform is a white shirt, a tie, and a suit. But today we're all proudly wearing, or many of us are wearing, our 50th anniversary official logo shirts, because as of last Monday, Salt Lake Community College officially celebrated its true 50th anniversary. We opened in September, on September 14th, 1948. And so this has been a big week for us, and we can't think of any more fitting activity or more exciting thing to do than to be here this morning with Larry Miller and his friends and his family. I would like to uh, introduce those who are sitting in the sun. <laughs> um, uh, I think first you all know uh, uh, Larry Miller and his, and his wife, uh, Gail, and we appreciate it. And you'll hear from him in just a few moments. To my right, we have Bonnie Jean Beasley, who is the chair of the Salt Lake Community College Board of Trustees. It's Dr. Cece Foxley, who is the Commissioner of Higher Education in the state of Utah. We have uh, Tom Maybe from Sahara Construction. And their work is, is now ready to begin, I, I think. And also uh, Jeff Fisher from FFKR Architects. And Jeff has been the individual who has spearheaded the design of this uh, building and the general master planning for the area. So. We're very pleased to, uh, to have all of those folks with us this morning. Now, as I looked out the audience, uh, I, I can't see anyone who's not really very, very important in some way. So it, it gets very hazardous to start making introductions. But there are a few people I would like to introduce. I'd like to introduce Dr. Norman Riggs, who is also a member of our Board of Trustees of the College, uh, Mayor Tom Dolan from the city of Sandy, and uh, Senator Howard Stevenson, and Howard's in the back. And we have a lot of other dignitaries here, and we'll be here till uh, 1 or 1.30 if I start trying to do that. So I will, I think I'll stop at that point. But we want you, all of you to know how much we appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning for this great occasion. We can't express uh, enough gratitude, not only to, uh, to all of you for being here, but certainly to Larry and his organization and his family for what they're doing for Salt Lake Community College. I'd now like to, uh, to ask uh, Bonnie Jean Beasley, who is the chair of our board of trustees, to make a few comments. And then following uh, Bonnie Jean, we'd ask uh, Dr. Foxley to also uh, extend a few comments to you. And then we'll turn the time over to uh, someone probably very few of you know, Larry Miller. So thank you. We're so glad you're here this morning. Bonnie Jean. Good morning. We celebrate the formal beginning today of the Larry H. Miller Entrepreneurship Training Center. Small business and entrepreneurship drive the engine of the American economy. Larry Miller realizes this and has spent time, energy, and resources to encourage free enterprise and business training. That is what this new center is all about. It is appropriate that we recognize and honor Larry Miller. Here is a man who is a model entrepreneur, an exemplar for others to follow, achieving many successes in his remarkable life. Larry Miller has chosen to turn around and offer a helping hand to others. On behalf of the Salt Lake Community College Board of Trustees, I express our deepest appreciation to Larry H. Miller for his vision, commitment, and generosity. Thank you. Good morning. What an exciting day this is. Larry and Gail and your family, your organization, 
On behalf of the State Board of Regents and the entire system of higher education in Utah, we express gratitude to you. It seems that we do it over and over again. This will be a symbol that will have your name, however. Some of the other programs that you have supported are not as well known. This will be a symbol of what Larry and his family and his organization continues to give over and over again to the people of the state of Utah. And on behalf of the Regents and the other institutions, we thank you. This is a, a greatly appreciated contribution. We admire, appreciate, and love what you do for your home state, Utah. Thank you very much. I'm still organizing mine in my head. Uh, as as um, as I've approached it today, and what it is that I might share with you about the thoughts and feelings I'm having, and about uh, what it is that we're doing here, I've had a lot of thoughts go through my mind to where I, I could make. Uh, President Buck's comment about staying for one or one thirty come true. Uh, I won't do that, by the way, so you don't have to worry about that. But there are some things that I would like to share. Um, in in moments where I had chances to reflect on on things that I've been able to do, people I interact with, uh, places I go, and so on. Um, if I spend time reflecting on that very long, it always comes back to a point where I think the thought, and if, if she's in the proximity, expressed to Gail that the things I do that are visible to you and to others, I truly believe would not be possible at all without without her influence. She downplays that, but uh, to me that's one of the true principles in my life, that that the support, support and stability that she's given to me have allowed me to have a platform and a base to work from that allow things such as this to come to fruition. I'd like to recognize that uh, in her, even though she refutes that. Uh, it's one of those deals where we voted and she lost. Um, <laughs> also, I'd like to thank uh, my children that have come today. Uh, we invited all five of them. We're, we're only aware that three of them have made it, but I appreciate them coming today and sharing this also. I think that's particularly important because I'm, I think the time will come when they will need to be making... Good. Brian's here too. He's the youngest. We didn't know if he'd make it, so Gail keeps me straight on that also. Uh, but I, I would admonish uh, uh, you, you children that are here of ours, to uh, pay special attention to the, to the, not just what's uh, being uh, represented here with this groundbreaking that's going on today, but the spirit of all of it. Um, because I think it's important that you catch and nurture and maintain the, that spirit so as to be able to seize and create opportunities in the future that you will have. And that, of course, is not limited just to my children, but to, to each of you. Uh, as has uh, been said already, we don't get to do something like this every day and I was thinking about, as I drove up today, I was, I was kind of surprised at the number of cars and the number of you that are here. And it was, it was fun to see that and, and create a celebration that we're here about. And uh, it, it caused me to reflect. Some of you know that I'm teaching a, a full-time course at BYU on uh, entrepreneurial perspective. I've been doing that uh, for about three years now because first I was spending a day a semester and then two days a semester and then five and then ten. And, and pretty soon the dean of the School of Business said, why don't you just come teach a full-time course? So I've been doing that, and it's good for me because it causes me to reflect on the things that I'm doing, where I'm at in my life personally and business-wise, and be able to express that to the students. 
along with uh, some of the things I can perhaps help te help teach them uh, that may that may help them to accomplish uh, some higher objectives in their lives. Uh, in in doing that, uh, one of the things that struck me this morning is that the very fact that we're here, I think, is reflected. Uh, by what it is that uh, this facility is about, which is about uh, a place to foster and nurture and develop uh, entrepreneurship and the relationship between freedom and free enterprise. Um, I think the fact that we are here uh, being able to do this uh, demonstrates the entrepreneurial spirit itself. I think that part of being an entrepreneur requires one, even though it's not written, requires one to understand the nature of the creation of resources and assets and the organization of financial and, and human resources and applying them not only in one's personal life or business, but also to society. And I, I, uh, I feel that, that most who enjoy the entrepreneurial spirit inside of them understand that as a byproduct of their entrepreneurial activities. Uh, and I know in my early years, uh, as we started out, I was focused on paying for what we had bought. But as our organization and business has matured and I've had a chance to reflect on, on uh, the marvelous blessings and gifts that we've uh, been given through our businesses and through the efforts of, of thousands of erstwhile associates, uh, I think that it's only appropriate that uh, that we reflect our gratitude through efforts like this one. Uh, it was interesting in, in uh, one of the meetings that I had with President Budd recently where we talked about the schedule of, of this first phase uh, that's, that's being shown in this little white model here in the lower picture that's a rendering. Uh, and, and I said to President Budd, I'm not sure when we build buildings three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And he said, well, I'm kind of glad to hear that. Don't get in too big a rush because it's nice to have facilities, but it's also really bad to have facilities you can't properly utilize. And uh, that was kind of an interesting education for me. Uh, so I'll uh, adhere to your admonishment and, and we'll, we'll take it slow, kind of. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, as I said earlier, there's a lot of things I'd like to say, a lot of things I'd like to express about my emotion uh, that I'm feeling, uh, one of which uh, I think needs to be said, and I hope I don't uh, embarrass him, but I've had the opportunity to be associated with SLCC for a number of years. Uh, we began our own business in Murray in 1979, and shortly after that I was invited to speak uh, in, in various forums uh, at the community college. Uh, and as my career began to develop, uh, that that uh, opportunity increased, and, and I was invited there uh, more and more. A number of people in our organization uh, have been there uh, as guest lecturers uh, or guest instructors, and continue to do that. And, and I feel uh, with with community colleges that they fill a very special role in our society. I think uh, universities are great. I think various types of educational opportunities are are needed to complete all the various strata and the needs in our in our society for education. But I think uh, community colleges fill a very special role, uh, uh, a, a niche. It's a pretty broad niche, but what I see it being generally is I think that they uh, have the capacity to be very responsive to what the needs of individual students, whether they're students just coming out of high school or whether the students that have already been out in the workforce and want to improve their lot in life and are courageous enough, uh, even while uh, maintaining a family in many cases, to come back to school and, and fight that battle of raising a family, working and going to school as well. I've had the opportunity to be at some of the graduations and shake their hands and look into the eyes of those students. And it's hard to have that experience and not be caught up in the spirit of it and want to participate in expanding it. And I think that's kind of the essence of what made uh, Gail and I decide that we wanted to participate in this effort. Uh, 
I told President Bud that we'll have to go at a speed where we can afford to pay for it as we go because we're not going to take any loans out. So we're not sure whether it's a five-year project or a 25-year project. The general anticipation is to try to build a building uh, every year or so. There are some economies in scale we can build, we can uh, accomplish by building a couple of times. So we're not sure how that rolls out. But but uh, if you look at the at the top picture on the easel with all the uh, red red roofs, you can kind of see what is today the the current plan for for the completed facility, which is pretty marvelous. I I have to laugh, and I hope I don't embarrass anybody. The very first draft we had of this from FFKR. Uh, there was a, uh, a relatively young architect turned loose on the design, had a couple more buildings on there than you see, but in what would be the upper left corner, which is actually the southwest corner out there, there was this big round thing on it on, the, on this first draft of the blueprint, and I, I looked at Jeff when he, when he first gave it to me and I said, what is that? And he didn't want to tell me very bad. He said, well, you got to understand, I didn't draw this. I said, I know that. You had somebody else do it. He said, yeah, it was one of our architects. I said, well, what is it? And he said, it's the meditation meadow. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> That's true. So I'm not sure where that architect was from or what he or she did or, or whatever. But anyway, uh, at this point, you can't see it, but it's still scheduled there in that architect's mind that the meditation meadow is down in that corner. <laughs> But that'll come after the other buildings get built. So, so uh, anyway, uh, with that, I, I would like to also say that, that over the period of time, I, I guess it's 15 years or more now that I've been involved with SLCC, there has been, for me, a common link in the various uh, ways that I've been connected as an instructor, as a guest lecturer, and so on, uh, and even in what we're doing today. And uh, I hope President Bud doesn't mind if I mention Sterling Franklin who has been a very special friend to me uh, and kind of, again, my, my um, I use the word common link or liaison with the college uh, uh, through times when I was a, a lot involved and times when I wasn't as much involved and he's given me a lot of good input and ideas and kind of helped steer me through uh, some of the, the political aspects of this and some of the practical aspects and and how the facility could be most useful to the college and to the community. Uh, I could go on and on, but uh, I think it's clear that I have uh, some strong feelings about this. I have a lot of excitement and hope for, uh, for what uh, can uh, happen and be accomplished uh, through this facility. Uh, I feel like when I look to the future, I think that it's clear that big companies, through all the mergers, especially in acquisitions we're seeing today, through the auditing firms, the advertising agencies, the banks, and other business, that there clearly is a uh, huge consolidation movement uh, that uh, early in the century couldn't have existed because of the trust busters. And a lot of things that are happening today would, would have uh, been considered antitrust at that time. In my mind, the, the job growth and the vitality of the free enterprise system. Will be maintained in this country because of small business. Small business anywhere from one single mother with two or three children running a business in her home to support her family to stay off welfare rolls up to maybe the, op the opposite end of the spectrum from someone who's had an opportunity such as myself to expand from what truly would be considered a small business to something larger than that, even though I still like to think of myself as a, excuse me, as a small businessman. I, I feel like it is that concept, the concept of, again, I'll use the phrase, the relationship between freedom and free enterprise through applic application of entrepreneurial ideas uh, which I think a lot of people have and, uh, inside of them, 